All right, I hope uh, you are all enjoying the weather out there. Cool, refreshing, and good for the brains, I think. Welcome, it's still the Daybreak Show on Rock City 101.9 FM in the city of uh, Bekuta. Yes, Citizens Forum, that time on the program where we discuss it. Let's see if we can find solution to the millions of structural problems that we have in the country. Don't give up. And the uh, other statement to be called me early this morning. Mm -hmm. I was like frustrated about the country, Nigeria. He actually used the word, we are leaving it for you people daily. I already have my body pass. Whatever that means, I still I don't want to think about the body pass right now. So those of you who are just planning to get your passport to travel, mm -hmm. please do it good well. And I say to the uh, man, don't worry. We are sowing the seed will definitely germinate and will germinate bountifully, isn't it? Well, I may want to go uh, very spiritual and uh, philosophical this morning, Dede, just like you said. I think um, we are simply reaping the seeds that were sown in the past. And the seeds yeah. that we so are sowing Since, right since now, we, have, we have realized that the seed sown is not good for the system, why don't we not plant? Yes, the seed we are sowing now will definitely be reaped by the future generation. That's what it is. Uh, it's about values. It's about uh, what exactly were the decisions and the choices made uh, by the older generation. <laughs> I think uh, it is very, very apt for us to actually, uh, you know, take a listen to what uh, former President Russia Kambasu has been saying in recent times. I think he has been able to agree that the older generation of uh, leadership failed. But he's saying that the new generation should not fail. Of course, you also agree with me that it's not uh, the time for mourning or lamentation. It won't take us anywhere. Instead, let's look at the back. Let's look at the past to help us build, uh, to help us mold today, which will build tomorrow for us. And that's what we'll continue to do here, particularly on the Citizens Forum. Um, yes, we are coming with another fresh structural issue this morning. Strengthening local government administration. I, as an individual, and I'm sure there are so many people uh, thinking along that line who believe that the so-called dividends of democracy or El Dorado for Nigeria and Nigerians can only begin with the community or from the community and right there through the local government administration. This morning, we have somebody who has an ample experience in administering local government here in the state. He was formerly a uh, chairman of Algon, that's the uh, Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, former chairman of Bafemi Owode Local Government, and of course, a legislator, a uh, former member of the State House of Assembly. He's going to be talking about his experience and what he thinks we should do in strengthening and administering local government today in the state it has been broken down to 57 if you want to add the lcds join them together 57. Um, one would think that number is big enough to take care of all the hamlets if there are any uh, villages communities here in the state we expect john of Bafemi to join us any time from now as we look at how do we strengthen local government administration in Nigeria. Dele Ayodo is my name. And I am Toby Joseph. Welcome once again to Citizens Forum on the Daybreak Show. Well, uh, before our guest uh, walks into the studio, you can start uh, bury your minds and of course your views as you guys have this. It looks more like a continuation of what we started yesterday, uh, the third year of government and of course, it's uh, uh, inability to actually uh, meet up to the yearnings of the people. What exactly is responsible for this? Or what exactly are the reasons why growth and development, service delivery, efficient service delivery, are stifled at the local government level? 0809-868-7344. 0 are the numbers to call. 32120 is the shotgun number. All you have to do is to type rock and have a space, type your message, include your name, and send to 32120. 
All right, three, two, one, two, zero. Maybe we should have the template. To be um, three days ago, the state commissioner for local government, Chief Judy Ojuko, uh, talked about the the states giving more power, strengthening the local government managers as they are now in IGR generation. And then, um, of course, especially there are complaints about assets and boundary sharing between the local governments and the LCDAs, uh, which you said will soon be resolved. But when you look at generating IGR, uh, local, okay, we have somebody. Hello, let's take you. Morning, sir. Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Akin. Good to meet my doctor. Thank you, sir. Yes, we were talking about the increase in the IGR. Uh, the man that is spoken to the other day. Yes, we have to give, as we are saying, we've been on this trip for about three days now. We have to give the government autonomy. And this autonomy has to be a guided one by every one of us. All of us have to be involved. Don't forget that they have been given so, sorry, Akin, when you say you give somebody autonomy and it's a guided one, the Yoruba data says Taba Funoni Abu Amal Dukwele ready to come to my mind. Sir? So, how do you now uh, give somebody who's not mature? Okay. Yes, we are not mature. We have to go through the tunnel. So, we'll give them the autonomy. But we guide them. How do we guide them? We guide them through the threat. Not to mean we are being a rock city now. That's how on deck. All of us have to be together. But somebody will be there to be more responsible. No way that the last time they were still responsible. They are dealing with corruption. Look at the way Shaman was donating 10 million per month. And we saw the entry. So we don't want that again. Let's give the government another hand spot to be on deck. Thank you. Mm. All right, uh, that, that's this uh, one story to be the donation or contribution of 10 million to that has refused to go since uh, 2003, 2011 admission. Well, uh, I guess, respectedly, is one of them, or was one of them during that era. So maybe you were able to confirm or debunk that. Uh, that will fall part of the question you should ask him, or we will ask him if truly uh, 10 million naira were being donated uh, for somebody or as contribution. But uh, again, uh, if you look at it, uh it's easier said than done yes and some people will ask is anything wrong you in as well if it is that money why would they donate you understand it's not every money donated that is stolen we should also get uh, that right all right let's take uh, this call hello hello yes your turn to speak we have you on good morning all right strengthen your speak we have you on good morning all right, strengthening local government administration. Um, Toby, I was uh, driving at a point, uh, quoting from or uh, trying to extract what the local government commissioner, Chibjidi Oduko, said about the parent. Okay, hello. Hello, morning. Hello. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dr. Uncom. Thank you. Strengthening local government from Ashiro Street, of course. Strengthening um, uh, local government administration. I, I want to make a general statement, really, um, that even if you talk of federal state department, I think I'm beginning to suspect that I have been in a hurry. Nigeria is a country. Look, when we start having rich ministry in the Somawolo era, the other ones are conjectures. Up before 1954, uh, maybe say 1939. Below our conjectures, we are not sure what is written there. They are not written what we should can happen there. But look at a country like Syria. I'm just giving an example. The Amazon has been in Africa. It was the Amazon. Has been before the Bible was written. If you look at Jerusalem, before China has had administration dated to many, many millennia. We are just how many years old? I don't think we are up to 100 years old. We are, we are growing. Look. The guy cannot be born today and start working. That's what we want to do. The guy is born today. There are issues that are like milestone in the life of the nation of the human being. The guy cannot be born today and start doing marathon. You have to learn to suppress, to sit, to crawl, to stand, and to walk. We want to be born today and start running because America is running. We don't look at what have they gone through. Yes, we have problems with all our institutions. But I can assure you, we are in a process metamorphosis into getting into better, getting a much higher 
it may be or every uh, sector, every electoral process and all that. For example, now the issue of Godfatherism is going down. For example, now you cannot just walk in and tell us any nonsense and go away. For us, example, now even public force is no more in fashion. If you steal, if you hide, you don't you don't come in the street and tell us how much you have stolen as it was before. Okay. Those are my to the life of the nation. Right. We have local problems. No matter what you from now to tomorrow. Thank you. Write all sorts of things in our constitution. Oh, right, whatever. All right, thank you, Doctor. Come time off. Then it's why should a man should a quarter prepared by government? You go and do the rock. Oh, you got to throw water inside. All right, thank you. We must uh, let you go and bring in somebody else. Morning. 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 Yeah. I guess it's not yet in the house. I guess it's not yet in the house. All right, all right, no problem. Where's on his way anyway? Yeah, my name is Honorable Larry Dajilari. I'm calling from the Department of Health. It's a very good thing if you can send in the local government. You know, from the inside, one of the arms of government that is so close to the people. But unfortunately, no government in Nigeria can probably accept legal states that have so much empowered the local government chairman by giving. You know, they are full allocations to them, not touching it. But you still have prison government in some states, present government in some states. Still, you know, you stop, you know, the activities of the local government by, you know, uh, you know, giving them a part of their allocation. But in a session where they have their full allocation, I'm telling you, they are going to perform very wonderfully. But because of those days, when you need to have them, you know, clearing rural roads, you know, tying, you know, they might not be able to tap, but they create rural roads, they open roads, through generalization of changes and things like that. In the United section of most of all local government that I know from 20 years ago used to be very, very active. I mean, the health department too, they are into EPI, a lot of things. But now, what do we have? Only bond local government. Let me allow that to call my people. God bless you people there. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. God bless you. Hello. Hello? Yes, morning. Then where is this? Sorry. No, sorry, uh, Dr. Oko, you I will permit those of you who have spoken uh, to call back when oh, the guest... I took my two minutes, I took my two minutes. Yes, thank you. Uh, you can call back, when, can call back when our guest is in the studio oh, to ask you. questions. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yes, we'll permit that when the guest is in the studio. Good morning. Hello. morning. 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 Good morning, Toby. You see, let me say this. I think uh, we have been saying this, that local government and discretion should be handed over to the local government in whatever regards or disguise. At a time like this, when everything is going a while, I think I will support the first caller, Iduni, who said they should begin to govern themselves. Let them govern themselves. Self-discretion is needed. You see, if, you, if, if your freedom lies in another person, you can hardly get anywhere. And that is what has been our undoing in this country. That has been the problem of our nation. That has been the problem why we recycle all these old brigands, all the politicians. They go and sleep now. Let us have new blood. Let's let, let begin to look for people that have ends and the right methods now. Uh, we cannot continue like this. I want also to be a president of this country. So how long should we now continue to probably recycle all old triggers? You see, by all this local government, I the choices of freedom. Freedom is not from any, it should not come from anybody at all times. It should be that we should have a local government that have the skill to work and then for production, not service alone. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Let's go on this short music break. We'll be back. Okay, thanks for still being there. Rock City 101.9 FM, Daybreak Show, Citizens from this morning. Um, yes, we're still expecting our guest, John of Parfemi. Um, he was actually former chairman, Raymond North, uh, local government, not of Parfemi. As I mentioned earlier, Raymond North, uh, local government. He is on his way. He will soon, uh, very soon, join us. In the meantime, we'll continue to. 
take your own opinion and suggest us. Yeah, this is you, Shiko Ade, calling from us. Okay. Yes, strengthening the local government administration, like directly, you know, put forward. I think it's a big picture, you know, for the proper development at the, you know, the local level. But then, the, the needful still needs to be done. That is for us to get the, you know, the constitutional, you know, provisions, you know, that would make them, you know, to not have that autonomy like a species. Because they need autonomy for them to be able to, you know, be on their feet. For them to be able to do what people, the people at the grassroots expected of them to function, you know, optimally. That is what, you know, they need for them to be able to, when they're talking about strengthening, you first of all need to make them to be functional, adequately functional. You know, when they have that autonomy, they will not be an appendage to anybody. They will be independent and they will be able to now give that proper results, total results. You know, that dividends of democracy will be felt at that level. And that is what we are saying, you know. And if for us to be able to now extend, you know, we are talking about strengthening, you know, the local government, you know, at that level, you know, we still need to do what is right for them so that it's, you know, a joint effort of every one of us to give them, for them to be able to be independent, autonomous. So that they will be, we'll not be talking about strengthening them. And that is what I believe. And I know that God will help us with the concerted effort of everybody, the nation. They have the autonomy and they will be, you know, free of any control from anywhere. You know, thank you, God. God bless you too. Bless you too. Okay. Hello, you are on. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, morning. Yeah. I'm just going to let me go on the line. Thank you. Oh, you see, as I have said, Local government must have everything or machines to make them work. But if the past more than even a candidate to stand perform where at local level, whether you are young, whether you are 25 or you are 20 or whatever your age, you can perform where at the local level. When our machines are on guard and you are able to perform, you are able to assign all the rest of the local government. Definitely that kind of candidate or going to the government position. That's just it. That's the logic. So the whole who is saying someone is too is too young to want it because if you are young, you are able to perform at the job level, you are going to that government position. And the point that your party will get there, we are engaged in the candidate, we get it. Because so at the age of thirty thirty, you should expect your thirty five dollars. That if at at the government speak, you're able to perform well, directly. But what's something of becoming the president at age of thirty five? So we are talking about let's have everything in place. Let's have to be local level. Uh, you cannot go and think, he's too young, he's this, he's that. Nothing is impossible. Uh, well, you, you are looking at the human factor of my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Association of Local Governments of Nigeria here in Ogun State. He was also a member of the Ogun State House of Assembly. So, uh, you know, it's a, a right peg in a right role for the topic we are looking at today. Where we welcome John of Bafemi to the studio. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right. All right. Fine. Okay. Um, I'm sure you will have been listening to some of the comments of uh, the listener before, uh, but let's start uh, this way. Now, part of the present administration's time of strengthening local government administration is to break it down and create local council development authorities. However, revenue generation remains the problem. And like it is often said, if there is no money, there can't be any idea. From your experience, can you give us suggestions or can you give them suggestions on how you think they will be able to do this revenue drive? Thank you very much. <clears throat> First and foremost, let me thank you and thank the people of Ogo State uh, who have given me, especially the local government, who have given me the opportunity to have had some kind of knowledge in the area of local government administration. And in the legislature of Ogun State. Um, this morning, I will want to take the topic one by one. First and foremost, let's talk about the allocation to local government areas. When I was at the local government level, as the Argon chairman, I was privileged to have attended some meetings at the higher level. And I quickly put it in there then, have some publications to back this up, that the federal government, you don't build a house from the rooftop. You start from the foundation. Local government is the foundation of any development in any country. And therefore, I made a suggestion then that the allocation have been skewed too much to the federal level and it should be redistributed in this manner. That at the best, federal government should not have more than 25%. The state, 35%. And the local government, 40%. That will enable people of high integrity to contest for administration of local government areas. A situation whereby you have people that have not been tested in various fields of administrations administering local government is a big problem. That is number one. Number two, the House of Assembly in every state should be given financial autonomy because these are the people that are let me put it this way so pretending legally say over local government areas they are the people that formulate some kind of uh, laws for the local governments to operate upon even though the constitution says that it is a third tier of government it is not actually so it's like an appendage of the state government so if the house of assembly uh, in each state have financial autonom uh, autonomy, they will be able to perform independently of the governor of any state. But a situation whereby the House of Assembly will have to go cap in hand to beg for money from the governor, then they will have to be doing whatever the governor asks them to do, whether rightly or wrongly. That is the truth. It's a hard fact, but that is the truth. Now, the next one is that the local government councils it's unfortunate they are not parts of the federating unit they are under the administration of the governor if they were made to be a federating unit that could have been a lot better although i'm not unaware that we have 774 local government uh, council areas in this country so it, it would be too much or too many for the 774 to belong to the state uh, uh, when they are uh, having a meeting in abuja what we can do is this you can make the Algon chairman of each state to represent the local government council areas at that level if they are part of the federating unit. But then it has to go through the constitutional amendment. Another area I want us to look at is the financial autonomy of local government councils. I'm not unaware that the National Assembly is doing a very good job now. We are trying to push this through between 2004 and 2007 and thereafter. But unfortunately, it was impossible because some people were interfering in it that it should not be done. 
Why? Because these people that I'm talking about, I don't want to mention names, were feeding facts on local government forms as a then. Even now. But if the money is coming directly as allocated by RAMFAC to the local government areas, let them be responsible for whatever they are doing. We have the House of Assembly there. We have the, the councillors at the local government levels. Let them be playing their oversight functions over these people. And you will see that there will be better development and because they will be strengthened more. How do you strengthen the local government? Number one, if they don't have financial autonomy, they're weak. There's nothing they can do. That's just one of it. Then another area I want us to look at very closely is federal government. You might that may look as if I am moving off the track a little bit, but they have something to do with it. Federal government must divest itself from the number of ministries that they are having. If you give 40% to local government areas, leave them to go and develop their own agri uh, 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 agriculture on their own, the health sector, the education sector, make it their responsibilities. From this 40% you are giving them, it's going to be a lot better. I was asking the Federal Minister for Agri sometimes, who came to represent uh, the late uh, President Yaradua at a seminar we had uh, in Abuja. And I was asking him, say, look, you have these big ministries here and there. Show me your cassava plantation anywhere in this country. And everywhere was silent. It is the responsibility of the local government leaders. If you give them enough funds, that will be better. Because of our time, I'll just be taking it like that. Now, let's look at local government administration between 2003 and 2011. I happen to be a local government chairman between 2004 and 2010, thereabout. Uh, and the way allocations were being released to us, I make bold to say that there was no interference with the local government funds by the then governor of the state, but by Benga Daniel. I've had it in some areas where people are saying, no, that wasn't true. He was, he was not mentally, you can call any chairman that operated between that period, 2003, to 2011. Ask them. I was just going to share about from 2004 to 2010. There was no time that the governor of Ogun State meddled in that. Uh, okay, that, 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 that uh, no, clearing yes. this, clearing yes. this, uh, because yes. this is an issue that has come up. Okay, some people have said if this is so, if, mark my word, because a lot of people still do not believe that, but that if that is so, that they suspect that it is because the chairman then were also very so to say servants obedient servants of the then governor doing and going by every instruction he gives which includes donation from the local government post to that of the state i can't remember any donation that we ever donated to the post of the state there was no time whatsoever we were so independent we were allowed to operate by ourselves, even though we were being supervised by the House of Assembly by way of oversight functions. Nobody dictated to any local government chairman during the period of 2003 and 2010 or 11, like I said, because I was there as a chairman, I was there as the Algon chairman. We were able to execute so many projects. Let me refer you to Remona local government. Anybody that ever been to Remona local government, then we know and can testify to this that in terms of roads and other infrastructural facilities we provided because we had the funds so to do compared to what is happening now constructed by local government yes i have so many roads that are constructed there so what, what do you think has happened now that it is connected that style because we were saying now and yes then, to what, the what, best of my knowledge what is what, happening what is this even salaries of local government operators are being paid directly from the state to the best of my understanding. As of today, I can tell you that the amount released to local governments to perform their functions to the best of my knowledge is just about two million naira. How can you be how can you make them responsible? You have to make them responsible. But the present government them. will say yes. it's it's a pile of the inherited and they need to clear all this. What did they what, say they are inherited they inherit? all this mess? What do they inherit? And, and uh, uh, losses and debts so it has to come from the past administration debts in which area that, that's the thing uh, pensions and sort of local government staff is there for them and of course uh, yes, the federal allocation suddenly i know there are some local government i know that very well 
that um, I think it should be between the 2011-2012 that got zero allocation. And that was because some of them here in the state have borrowed. So, you see, this is part of what I'm trying to explain. If you give them autonomy, they will be able to manage themselves. And another area where local governments are going to zero allocation or where they cannot be able to meet up their responsibilities is because of the staff that has been employed and posted to this local government area directly from the state. It is absolutely wrong. When I was chairman of local government, you can go and check out. Anytime they posted people I did not need to my local government, I used to reject them and send them back to the state. But I don't have money to pay. I don't even have a place for them to sit. I don't even have a work what about to do. the teacher's salary? We were paying and we were paying regularly. We, I did not did know. You, we did not did know. You ever, did you ever obtain credit facility from the banks? I think the only time we obtained credit facility from the bank was when we wanted to do a particular project that was far bigger than us, but we knew that it was achievable and we knew that when our allocation came, we'd be able to offset it and we did. I had never left any What was the project debt. and how much did you obtain? The, this project, for example, from Oderemo to Ishara, we have what uh, we call it Unity Road. That road used to be an old road that had been overgrown with weeds. It was never tied, it never received any bitumen in its life. And uh, I need to facilitate uh, merchandising between these two towns. So I had to go and open it up. I had to do a fill of well over 20 feet. At a particular point in that place, I had to construct what we can call, well, it's not a bridge, some uh, culverts kind of, and it really got a lot of money. I can't remember how much the money is now. Uh, and we opened up that road, and it opened up a relationship between the two. No, uh, incidentally, Honorable uh, Bafemi, yes. at time, we have to take the road. But when we come back, we'll also be interested from your submission, why then do we have, why did the state, why um, do we have this crisis? Between the then the uh, Rebel Northeast, uh, the large Joyce local government, and then the state government, because these the stories are the first day has to do with all these things you said never existed. We'll take this break, we'll come back after the 10 o'clock news. We still have with us the former chairman of Argon Association of Local Governments of Nigeria in Ogun State and former chairman Raymond North local government. He was also a member of the Ogun State House of Assembly. So you will agree that rightly he is fit to look at the issues being discussed. Threatening local government administration in Nigeria. We'll be back. 11.9 FM in the city of Avecta. Yes, exciting educating period we have in on the Citizens Forum as we look at how to strengthen local government administration and the former chairman of the Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, Algon, Ogun State, former chairman Raymond North, local government, and of course, a former member of the Ogun State House of Assembly, John Obafemi, is our uh, guest. Before that break for the news, uh, Obafemi, we were talking about what then led to the crisis that engulfed some local governments in the state. Um, Ijebu East, yes. uh, where uh, Tundala Dundere was chairman. Thank you for correcting that. It was not Raymond North East because it never existed then. It was Ijebu East that uh, Tundala Dundere was uh, chairman. Um, strictly speaking, I cannot say exactly what led to the problems between... No, Obafemi this question came because yes. from the point of your position that there was no intrusion, there was yes, no... That, that's where I'm going. That's that's what going. So to. I cannot say this, what actually led to the uh, misunderstanding between the Lord of Joya and the Lord of but I can confirm, mark my word, confirm in capital letters, that it was not a question of interfering in local government forms. Let me take you on this, Mr. Yodo. <clears throat> Sometime in 2009, I discovered that the local government funds were being shared in a way that put some of us in a, in a very disadvantageous position. What, how do I mean? For example, Raymond local government was signing the list then, and I discovered that they were deducting a large sum of money from my local government to fund teachers in the state. They would deduct this money and work from every local government, pull it into an account, and use it to pay the teachers. 
at the end of the day, they were still using indices to allocate the funds to us. I said, look, if I have to be assisting Abekuta North or Iwa North example to pay the teacher salaries, and I'm still taking home something that is less than this to local government, then there was no how I could take it anymore. So I had to take it up with the state governor on behalf of those of us that were so disadvantaged. And he saw, he never knew. It was in 2002 that they did this thing, ever before he assumed office. He never knew that that was what was happening. And I told him that from now on, I want to be receiving my own allocation as it was coming then from Abuja. <laughs> Obviously, he saw into it that this will create problems for some local government area that will not pay the teacher's salaries. And he was asking me then, what other option do you have? I said, okay, to ensure that I have sympathy for my sister local governments, will be deducting it like that, but the balance must be shared equally. And that was the system we adopted, I think, from November 2009 till I left government. So if I'm helping you to pay your salary and you are still taking home something greater than mine, then I must be stupid to have accepted that. And that was how we were doing it then. Um, Ijebu is what I'm going is this. Ijebu East was one of the local government areas that benefited from this arrangement. So he, Ola Duje cannot come and tell me that he was being cheated or money was being deducted for his own allocation illegally. By who? And that is why I said he needs to come and clarify that. So your position yes. is that at no time was any legal no deduction was made from any, any deduction made What about, you, you also told that Abekuta not yes. where Abiba Jai was. Yes. Yes. Was that not a similar issue? during that period where he has to, the chairman then has also had to protest that uh, he was being cheated from the way the allocation were being distributed. I'm not, I'm not aware that Abib, because Abib was the general secretary for Angon on this, in this day, and I'm not, I'm not aware that he ever protested, I'm not aware he ever complained, talk less of protesting, I'm not aware. I also heard from this radio program that a local government chairman donated 10 million naira, if I'm right. <laughs> yes, one of our uh, listeners. See, fallacy. That is not true. But there was a story that one million was being uh, contributed as uh, monthly this thing. To where? To who? To the state governor. Never, there. never. It never happened. Go and cross check. I have my facts and figures. I am not defending not by going Adane. No, we are not defending never. anybody. Not we are defending just him. trying to put. It uh, never happened uh, because part of the problem people have. Um, identified uh, militating against local government is the very serious muslim from the governors i can even ask you to invite a Alabi, who was then my commissioner ask him this question he was the one sitting on the table when we were sharing this uh, uh, allocation okay if you are so confident of sorry to be just uh, this one, one more if you are just confident of the way and manner local government was run then compared to the, I have that question, what went wrong? How did we get to this particular that today, state government, in Ogun State particularly now, have to set allocation on the side monthly to assist local government in everything, payment of salary, projects, and every other thing. Mr. Yodo, I want to even take you back a little bit. When we assumed the office as local government chairman, under Tumabenga Daniel, we were made forced for, for the first time and the last time to pay the surveillance benefits and the salary owed by the previous administration under Mahali Rivade Babashova. We were forced to pay those chairmen and the local government councillors, supervisors, and all the rest of them. It was at this cultural center that they distributed their checks to them. He made sure because the then governor was saying, How could people have served your local government? and you make them to be suffering not to get their benefits. Mr. Ayodo, up till now, my benefits since 2010, I have not been able to get it till now. This government under Senator Bikula Mosul has refused to pay those of us that served under that government. Whereas under the government of Baba Oshoba, we paid even outstanding salaries. We did not leave any outstanding salary unpaid. We did not leave any salary unpaid before we left. So how? Okay. What is happening? Honorable John of our family, let us uh, look forward, um, looking at solutions. What exactly would you point out that we must do long term, mid term, 
shuttle to revitalize local government administration? Thank you very much. First and foremost, we must raise the bar, the quality of people that must be administering local government areas. Let's take the issue of uh, England, for example, in the Kingdom. If you see the people that are administering local government, they are people with high level of administrative capacities. The the are we lacking them uh, here? Because I know we are not the lacking in them. Had, uh, but, but, a PhD, yes. uh, the late uh, Dr. Salami. Yes. Was, who came and, from that's what I'm doing. We are not lacking in them. But does that cut across? You have to make the place attractive enough for them. But in a situation whereby I will be receiving my salary from the state governor and all they will give me to execute capital projects in my local government is just 2 million naira. I mean, why should I go there? Because people will be expecting so much from me to do. Like I said, I will, I'm proud, and I was proud to serve under administration of Otubak Begadane. I did so many projects because I had my financial autonomy. I was able to perform. Apart from the road sector, you want to talk about health sector? You want to talk about education sector? You want to talk about so many projects that we did. The best, uh, what do they call it, uh, co-chain store in Ugu State today is in Ramon local government. I don't know of any other that has been built since, since then. Is it the local government education authority building? Is it the magistrate court you want to talk about? Is it a renovation of uh, schools and, uh, and so How on? many so chairmen have you... come after you? I think about three. We the first one we had is now in the House of Assembly as the then chair, uh, caretaker chairman, Honorable uh, Adelaide. Thereafter we have uh, uh, Chief uh, Femi Shiyemi, and now we have another one there now, uh, uh, Mr. Tayo Shiwani. So now, going to your own question, <clears throat> like I said earlier on, the RAMFAC, Revenue Mobilization and Location of Finance Committee, have to go back to the drawing board. The federal government does not need anything more than 25%, and they have to scale down their ministries. They don't need to be in charge of Minister of Agri, Minister of Education, Minister of Health, and uh, even Minister of Works and Housing, even Energy. They don't need to be in charge of all those ones. Let them just have, if they want to have them at all, they, those ministries should just be formulating policies. And you don't, they don't need more than this your office as a directorate under the presidency. So that would, they will not be spending so much on them. That is number one. Now, I said they should not have more than 25%. The state, 35%. Then the local government, 40%. Now you can now see how you will be attracting people of proven integrity. High highly experienced people coming to the administration of the local government areas and they will have enough funds. Again, there must be financial autonomy to them. That is one. Number two, house of assembly in every state. Please let them be financially autonomous. Let them be cut off completely from the state government. Going cutting has to beg them for money. Does not allow them to do their, their work the way they should do it. They have to listen to the dictates of the governor. In, the, in, 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 in their oversight functions over the, the local government areas. That's number two. Number three, I did mention that if local governments can be structured in such a way that they can be part of the federating units by doing some constitutional amendment, that would be fantastic. It will help them a lot. Then the next level is, uh, like I said, the quality of the people who have mentioned that now, local government operators even at the state level, even at the federal level, the legislators must not be full-timers. Let them be part-timers. The amount of money being spent at this level, this arm of government, we have to look into it again. At the federal level, I am an advocate of a unicameral legislature. Then when we get to the local instead government the, level, okay. instead of the back camera, our economy cannot carry it. Let's say the fact to ourselves. If we, if, if, if we are sympathetic to the cause of Nigeria, we don't have an economy that can carry this kind of uh, excessive uh, expenditure. At the local government level, let all the councillors be part-timers. Maybe in a month they just spend one week. They come there, they do whatever they want to do. And let them go back to their various uh, uh, assignments. That will help a lot. Then we now have to ensure training and retraining of chairmen and their ESCO members and of course the civil servants too. 
there must be training and retraining. Let us imbibe in them that whatever you do in this local government, you are not at a loss, even by the time they transfer you away. Because I had a nasty experience, kind of. I developed uh, a cassava plantation of about 10 hectares. It was fantastic. I built 20,000 finger lake fish pond. I established or improved on the poultry farm that was there. And my agri department, I made them to be funding them, said that I was not going to be funding them, that you'll be funding yourself and you must be having something in the account. My brother, they were having something in the account. They were self financing. But today, the cassava plantation is no more. The fish pond is no more. The poultry farm is no more. Everything gone. Because they don't have enough funds to kind of ensure that they continue to be replenishing. But when you, when you place, keep talking about not having enough funds and yes. there are considerable provisions for these local governments to make money, you want to call IGR. IGR. So what has happened to that? You use money to generate money. If you don't even have enough funds to fuel your car as a local government administrator or chairman, so to say, are you going to have money to fund areas where you have to generate IGR? You, you, you spend money to generate money. So they're handicapped as well. And that's what I meant again by saying adequate training. Some of them lack the kind of training that will enable them to generate IGR. Yes, Honorable John Abafemi, one major issue which uh, Nigerians have been debating for, for so long is the issue of uh, who should be responsible for the payments and welfare of primary school teachers who are under the local government. Some are saying the federal government should take up this responsibility so that it will free up uh, uh, this uh, continuous uh, lack of uh, funds that the state governors have already talked about in the payment of these uh, primary school teachers. Would you subscribe to this? No, I will not subscribe to it. And that is why I spoke on that redistribution of the allocation. If I, as a local government chairman, I made, I, 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 I made to pay my teachers, my health workers from the allocation coming, which is more than sufficient, I'm so to say, I will be able to monitor those teachers in those various primary schools. I will set up a machinery to monitor the health workers because I'm the one paying them. I cannot be paying you for idleness. And that is why I will go against that. It still goes back to this RAMFAC issue, uh, Revenue Mobilization and Education Finance Committee. Uh, commissioner issue. Let them be responsible. Don't take their responsibilities away from them. Look at the signage issue, for example. It's, it's on Schedule 4 of the Constitution. But the state have taken all these things away. Their sources of revenue have been taken away by the state. It is against the Constitution. It is bad. It should not be so. But then why don't we have, we have Algon, which was speaking on behalf of every local government. Like you said, the 712 cannot talk at there. Why did this body not challenge that. Thank you very much. I happen to be among the Algon chairmen that visited the National Assembly during our tenure under uh, Governor Wiki. Governor Wiki was uh, then our, our president. And we were almost, almost making a breakthrough. But I can assure you that the state governors did not, and I don't think they still want that thing to stand. There's a way. They, they, they go about it. They are more powerful than us. They have enough money. They have everything. And they will ensure that they frustrate. They frust who are frustrated. You don't need to tell me who frustrated us. I don't need to tell you who frustrated us. But we know that the governors, uh, I, I, I don't want to generalize because I don't know which state is allowing uh, the, the, the autonomy to their local government areas. They will not allow it because they know that they are they're having their ways somehow now one seeming solution that the some of these governments have created is lcds or our, our lcds do you think this will actually achieve anything when it comes to bringing governance closer to the people in a state like Ugo state where we are not generating enough it's going to be extra boarding uh my people will not like that kind of thing they will still want the local government to even be divided further so that it can be closer to them. Good enough. It's a way of developing the local government areas, provided they can be adequately funded. But in a situation whereby we create these structures 
And by the time they get their allocation, they just spend them on recurrent expenditures. You can't have any meaningful development. All right, let's hand over, let's switch over the microphone to where you are. For the messages and tweets that came in earlier, we have a couple of them. And then we switch to the calls. Uh, this one says, the problem of local government presently is the state governors. None of them is truly in support of giving power to the local government. I'm afraid if this, is, if this will materialize in this era. Deja Rebisi at ABC Center, that one from Abuli Ololi. Autonomy for local government is welcome. As we speak today, any sane person aspiring for any position at that level will know that levels have changed and eyes are on them not to give excuses for non-performance. Pressure will definitely be on them and even the state. Kayode, Randa, sent in that one. Honestly, local government administration has been hijacked by some state government in terms of IGR, water, and sanitation, agriculture, and works. God will help also. Shuaga sent in that one. Allah law for me, Jones says it's good. It will help them to implement some projects on their own. If the governors are independent, <coughs> local governments can also stand alone. Unfortunately, most of our local government chairmen and councillors, as a matter of fact, do not even know their duties and responsibilities. A trip to the northern part of the country will amaze you. The local government secretariats are always deserted and are only alive at the end of the month when the allocations have arrived to be shared. I support local government autonomy, but I'm afraid the chairman will be mismanaging funds like they did under the AD and PDP government when they had partial autonomy. And the legacy they left behind are hotels here and there. The facts speak for itself. Although it is my ear sent in that. Kudos to our guests on the submissions. Sonny Wawali Abiba Jai in Abiakuta North. Uh, during his tenure, constructed the Kiriku and Mugada Road. Built health centers in Emala, Ukiata, among others. No other projects were done by any local government since 2011. Ken Diaton, the Abakari, sent in that. Uh, this one says, I want your guests to let us know what the local government will lose if primary school teachers' salaries and allowances are put under the control of the state or federal government because primary school teachers are tenants in the local government and they are being treated as such. Olani Yi sent in that. Let, let him quickly to be handled that. So many. Yes, uh, <clears throat> like I said earlier on, it's like making the local government chairman irresponsible where you take the people that are supposedly be to be, uh, that, that should be their staff, take them away from them and ask somebody higher than them to be paying their salary. I look, it would look ridiculous to me, I would look irresponsible. I must be responsible to my duties. I must be alive to my duties. If you believe that I am, let people come and be supervising wherever I'm lacking, for goodness sake, the law is there. Let me be dealt with appropriately. All right, let's move on with the messages. So where are the roads uh, your guests are the student claims to local government constructed? They were sharing money and the officers were marrying junior wives. No altar of achievement in any local government. That's over Alan. I'm sure you want to react to that later. Two thirds of the seven and seventy four local governments in Nigeria were created by northern military head of state for the north to conquer to corner Nigeria's wealth and to be producing majority representation in the National Assembly. Local government should be created by each state based on our resources to fund same. Nigeria should be restructured into six autonomous geopolitical zones with weak center. For Nigeria mm. to progress. Tumba Debo sent in that one. Good morning. In fact, to butcher the guests in the studio, uh, with all what we have seen and I saw, I see many projects done by the by the then chairman of our local government. I go to the south, for example, apart from the complexes, the students' luxurious buses, tractors, which were used to request uh, to clear our roads through the local throughout the local government by the communities. He donated vehicles to all police divisions bus to communities and valleys by the local government administration. Thank you. That's Larry. And uh, this one says, ask your guest, Honorable Bafemi, how much he collected as security votes during his tenure at Demola for Migyaba, sent in that one. All right. Uh, this other one says, sir, when Governor Musu collected first party refund money, he announced on radio that all former political officer, officers who served under, under former Governor Benga Dario should come for their money. Sir, are you sure that all of you have not collected checks up till today? As Shola asking you about uh, severance and benefits. The deficiency in local government administration is caused by all of us. By this, I mean all of us in the elitist class <coughs> and in fact all of us who are parliamentarians on this platform. 
And my bone of contention is that it is an open truth that the main challenge of this country has been bad leadership at all levels. And all we have been doing is criticizing those courageous human beings who have put themselves forward to participate in politics. Like philosopher Plato said, one of the penalties for refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. And there it is, my year, sent in that philosophical one. All right, you want to quickly react uh, before we go to speak <coughs> and comment? Thank you very much. <coughs> oh, the first one that state governors not willing to give power to the local government. Of course, they will not be willing because they are cornering their allocation. They are the one spending the allocation for them. And I don't know why that should be so. It's against the constitution anyway. That is just the reason that I will give to that. Any local government chairman not willing to come under pressure is not worth his salt. If you are a leader, so to say, you are a chairman of a local government and you don't want to come under pressure, then you are not worth your salt. You should not even contest election in the first place. Because pressures will come anyway, it's natural. For anybody that is leading any organization, you will have your ups and downs. You will have people that will be coming to you for one thing or the other. People will be expecting so much from you, and that will create pressure. And there will be times that you will not be able, financially, you, know, you, you, you will be capable somehow financially to deal with certain requests from the citizenry. And of course, you must be able to find a way out to resolve it. You have to make the best use of any, even the worst situation. You must, be, you must be capable to make the best use of any situation at all, whether good or bad. Uh, that is that. Uh, that some chairmen and councillors don't even know their responsibilities. If you observe, I did mention that there should be training and retraining of these people that are operating at that level. Train them, let them know what they're supposed to do. Don't just vote people into power, swear them in, and just leave them to their own. They are must be training and retraining right from that high level to the lowest level. I want to thank uh, Honorable Habib Ajayi. You know, I did mention his name when I was talking earlier on, and uh, to buttress my, uh, <clears throat> my statement, he came up on the program. Habib Ajayi, I want to say thank you to you, kudos to you too. There are some chairmen, if you give them enough funds, they will be building hotels, they will be mining wives here and there. You, as somebody from my local government area, you know how much. I am receiving as a representative at that level. And you now see me marrying wives, building hotels, building new houses here and there. Your responsibility too is to report me to the appropriate authority as number one. Number two, when I come to you again for your vote next time, don't vote for me if you know what you are doing too. If you are not the one that's encouraging me to continue looting your funds, you should not vote for me. But unfortunately, these same people we go back and vote in this person that they are complaining against for a part of porridge it's unfortunate our people we need to educate and reorientate them uh the local government should be created by the state depending on how the state wants to you know to be governed yes if, if i will support that let the state governments let them create their own by themselves because they they, they, they know how they're going to fund them you don't have to create local government for me and ask me to come and be funding them. Have you, have, have you made enough provision for me to fund such local government areas? So I support that. That when I also collected the first parade club, he, he called everybody to the, uh, is it arcade or whatever they call it? Mm. And selected okay. to, the, to, 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 to the best of my knowledge, those that have left PDP and joined APC. I don't want to mention them. Some of them were paid. Those of us that remained and remain loyal with our integrity in our own party. But um, Chief Paul Nadiqua is still in PDP. Uh, no, that one is at state level. I'm talking of local government level. Okay. The people he paid there were state functionaries. I'm talking of local government operators. Local government, okay. Why should you pay the state operators and you refuse to pay the local government operators? Yes, you, you cannot tell me that, well, I'm not the one paying your salaries. Then leave the allocation of the local government to them. Then I'll be able to face my chairman. You have refused to let go the allocation to my chairman. What can I do? What should I do? If I'm going to my chairman, I'll be punishing him for the offense he never committed. So that is just that. Uh, like I said earlier on, if you make the local government more attractive, if you make it more responsible, 
it will attract responsible people to position. I'm not saying the people there are not responsible. It will make people that have better experience in administration to come to that level, and all these problems will be up. Thank you very much. All right, let me quickly go to tweets, and then we'll wrap it up with uh, calls. We have a whole lot of them. Let me just try to pick some. Uh, this one says, uh, the best way of strengthening the local government is by better funding and reading it of corruption. That's committee, Mita Wari Wuko. Um, what led us to where we are now regarding our local government administration? Without yesterday, today is impossible. Likewise, tomorrow. Oshumi Wafatai sent in that one. Ajay Shafir says, the governments of some state are emperors that have turned local government to their personal benefit. Local government bill, uh, local government autonomy bill must be passed into law. Uh, Lara DM says, I agree with your guest that Gamodana did not touch local government money. That's why they have, uh, that's why some of them had enough money to build hotels everywhere. Dalani Robert says, if the local governments are not strengthened financially, there won't be development to the grassroots level. It is through the local government's state level can know what the populace want in the aspect of uh, infrastructure. Lawal Toyi says, the guest to the house has been economical about the truth. The hero he, uh, he spoke about was the time local government chairman were building hotels for themselves in Ogun State. All right, Ajumi Wa Fatai once again. I think he served at a time with the likes of Olabin Joy and Ubunjobi of Ijabu East and Ijabu North, respectively. What led to the crisis? They said one million era contribution was not for the state, but personal to each of the chairmen. Lawal told him once again, the former chairman is not telling us the truth. We were all around then. Crisis. We're on there. Let him point at any project he did, standing till date. The time he was talking about was the time of oil boom, and location was uh, high then, and it can never be compared with the infrastructure then. All right. Uh, Oshimi Wafata says, I agree with your guest on uh, on unicameral legislature and that of part time leg part time legislature at the local government level to reduce overhead expenditure. So the Lord of Joy was then around and confirmed contributions they did then. It is when they are jobless that they talk like this. Yamid Avinci says, I agree with most of what Honorable Buffett has said. However, I disagree on his assertion of the independence of the OGD. Uh, we know the encroachment of revenue areas. Areas of local government should have been challenged at the Supreme Court by Algon a long time ago. Lassa and Co. are aberrations. Honorable Buffett, did you at any time how to take bank loans to augment available funds for payment of salaries. All right, Laval once again, no to some of his submission. We also have excess and savings based on boom we had then. 2003 and 11, the time local government chairman were doing hotels for themselves. All right, you want to quickly react? Thank you very much. What was the name of your hotel? Who? Your hotel, because um, a couple of the messages you can go, me back you and can say go many of to you were anywhere yourselves. in this world. I never built anything during and after my uh, tenure let, in office. Okay. Because the money that was coming in, I was using it to fund local government projects and do a lot of work. Somebody was challenging me that which project did I do? That is still standing. That is still standing. All the roads that I built then, there are so many of them. I'm sure if I start counting, there will be more than 10 in that local government. They are all standing there to the glory of God. The market I completed at Ojaoba is still there standing to the glory of God. The coaching store that I built there is still standing to the glory of God. The local government education authority that I built there is still standing to the glory of God. The um, secretariat extension of massive one that I did to accommodate the staff is still standing there to the glory of God. The magistrate court that I built there is still standing to the glory of God. The health centers that I did then was standing up until the time I left. Then this government now came. I don't know why they removed all of them. So if there's any project I did, then they remove what you mean by remove? They scrap them. They scrap some of them, and I don't know. I don't. What about the structure of the building? No, no. It's it's like you you take a building, you renovate it. You know, it's not as if we built the new ones then, but we were having structures that we could use to those uh, in, in those areas. They have been scrapped. I don't know if they have any one left now in the local government. Those are the things. The tractor we bought then. It's still there standing, but I understand they've taken it now to Raymond North East local government area, but the tractor is still there standing. The portrait that I left behind that was generating funds to the local government, it, it has been scrapped after I left. All the vehicles I got for the KBACs, for the staff, for they were still there. Yeah, those, are, so, are those ones projects? 
Of course, they're part of capital. Platform, yes, of course, of course, of course. Indeed. So there are so many of them like that. I can't just continue recounting. So many. They are there and we did quality jobs. All right, let's uh, take a few calls. Yeah, uh, so maybe no, no one million contribution to the local government chairman. If there's any chairman that said we did, we contributed one million naira every month, let that let him come. I'm ready to confront him. There was nothing like contribution, nothing like that. Then the bank loan that I took bank loan, yes, there was a month I was given eight hundred million right from Abuja, eight hundred million naira allocation. The allocation of that money was so bad at all levels. Eight hundred million. Sorry, eight hundred thousand. Sorry, eight hundred thousand naira. The allocation was so bad, so I had no choice than to take bank loan to offset, and I paid everything back. If I left, how I much? Remember, how much did you obtain? Oh, I can't remember. Now it's a long time. I can't remember. But how, how much was the bill? How much was the bill? I think my bill then was hovering around 18, 19, 20 million, something like that. You know, so I had to take bank loan because I mean, somebody has to work for a month. You are not going to pay. Him. And they, they found it credible. And uh, my local government was at that amount. All right. Say, say about two, three calls. Uh, let's see who those three lucky ones will be. Can we take three? Hello. He has really spoke, spoken well, you know, and uh, you know, with all the things that he has said, he has cleared a lot of issues, you know, on ground. And I believe that people like that are the kind of people that we expect to be in government, so that they can be honest, doing things honestly, so that we'll be able to have their. Oh, okay. thank you. Let me add this. I want you to call this eighth assembly of the state performance. Shall I send in that one? Honorable John Obafemi, don't you think you and the rest of the old uh, bri uh, brigade should leave political stage when your vision is loudest? Uh, whilst, why are you still looking for anything called benefits when you have even suggested practicing politics on part time basis? Kind of really sent in that one. Uh, local government have failed in their duties in the past. Many things expected of them were not done. Instead, they were sharing money, marrying more wives, dating girls building different houses and hotels. To be sincere, I personally do not support the autonomy because they will still mess up. Even, uh, okay, that's David and Abby Mitchell. Because of our time, quickly we have this. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> that somebody did say that we should not be expecting the benefits or whatever after we have left the service. Whatever, I want, I, I would have expected him to have moved further. That every political, every elected or appointed political office holders from local to federal government level should not be entitled to that kind of thing not only just at the local government level i have left my job to come and serve my people at the end of the day somebody is now saying okay just take this one you know to reset to yourself and you're not saying the person should not take that kind of benefit i don't think it's fair let us be sincere with ourselves but if it is going to be done at all, it must be at all levels. Not only because the people that are actually facing the fire are the people at the local government level. Because you sleep and wake up with the people within your local government every day. Sometimes before you even wake up at all, they have lined up, almost blocking your, your gate or the, the gate of your house. And of course, you cannot close your eyes against them. You have to take care of your people anyway, either by providing them jobs or by you know listening to their requests and whatever. Uh, I don't want us to take too much time on that. Whatever is good for one is good for the other. Whatever is bad for the other one is bad for the other. Thank you very much. Now, the issue of hotels have you know, kept on coming up, coming up all the time. I know that John Obafemi never built any hotel. I never developed any property. Rather, excuse me, I was serving the people of my local government. For whoever so did build hotel, go and ask them where they got their funds from. I can remember that at one particular time, some people reported me to ICPC and to EFCC. They came and investigated me. But I am saying this to the public, that before they came to investigate me, they have gone to get my bank accounts. And what they got there, before I ever came to power, they were surprised that ah, they reported you that you built this your house. <laughs> when did you build it? I told them. <laughs> you even have more. In your account to be, and they saw how I was withdrawing money to fund the building. I, I, I didn't pick up quarrel with the people. It's not that I don't know them. I refuse to pick up quarrel with them. But I never developed any property. I don't have any hotel anywhere in this country. I stand to be challenged. For those that have, go and ask them. It depends. Is it somebody who is probably a legal practitioner and have his own farm? 
or somebody that has other businesses that is giving him money, should you now, because he's serving as a, as a chairman of a local government, you have to put chain in his hand and say he should not develop for his future benefits. You said that we should not be paid these benefits in the, in, in, when, we, when we leave office. Why do you want them to, 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 to live on? Except for somebody that actually used the money of the local government to finance such uh, projects, then I, I, I don't have anything to say than for the public to, to report the person. Now, you said we should be ready to leave the stage where the ovation is loudest. Go and ask people in my local government. I particularly said it to them that I was not going to contest anything at the local government level. And even when I was leaving the House of Assembly, go and ask the person that is there now. I called them the use that look. I look at the uh, House of Assembly level, I was leaving the state, and I left. Go and ask the person there now, that did I, did, did I contest an election with them? I refused to contest them. No, you, you young guys, I will not belong to the class of the people that will say the young shall grow at the age of 50. When you are telling somebody of 50 years old that the young shall grow, when, what, what kind of uh, statement is that? Say, no, you people come and take over. Go and ask them. So I don't belong to that kind of uh, uh, politician. But if my people still want me to serve at a higher level, why not? Because I know that I did serve them honorably and with all the integrity that I have. Thank you very much for that. That uh, the government should hands up the local government. So that one is overflowed. If they don't hands up, then the local government will continue the way they are continuing. That the governor motion is happy that some chairmen and councillors are dying for refusing to pay them their benefits. Of course, he's happy. If he's not happy, he will have paid. He will have paid them. <laughs> of course, the people that sat under him during the first tenure. I'm sure at the social state level, he must have paid them off. He, he paid some of us off. Some local government chairman, he paid them selectively. That is bad for a government in the state. Quickly, I'm can we just go to most time go now? Uh, uh, local government married many wives, I don't know. I have only one wife. I, I have married one wife. And can I quickly just talk? Somebody also talked about the security votes. Yes, because security votes. It depends on what the it depends on what the the, the the state governor believes that your allocation can carry. It depends. Is it it's the state subject. governor that determines the figure? It, 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 it is the state governor that will approve it. You cannot approve your uh, what is it called security vote on your own. No, it's the state governor. All right. Yes. Uh, horrible, John. The papa me we must say thank you for. We calling you and then coming as part of the service we also do to have people clarifying a lot of it. I'm sure you will have uh, settled the ratchets within some people over so many of the things we've talked about. We say a big thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, tomorrow it's a Friday, so keep the debate going on. We will continue really with the, the part B of this. Perhaps try to bring some of the names mentioned today onto the program next week to continue to look at the issue. There are several issues really, contentious issues on local government administration. Dele Ayodo is my name. I say God bless you all. God bless Rock City. God bless Nigeria. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. What's your name? Toby Joseph. Okay, that's Toby Joseph. Your program is here. How are you? All right. Yeah, thank you. I am Toby Joseph. Have a wonderful day.